Ready. Play. Get started. Ika, welcome back to the Porsche Champs from Green Stuttgart. Thank you. Twice the champion in the last two years. Just talk us through how excited you are to be back here and how much you're looking forward to defending your title. I'm really excited, especially because, you know, that's my first days on clay. So um, I'm happy to be back on the surface. Obviously, I really like it and I missed it. So um, it's nice to be back. And also, I love this tournament. So um, I have really great memories and hopefully I'm going to create some more memories this year. All right, if you like the first question. Uh, yeah. Mr. Stan, what have you done with your Porsche that you won last year? Um, well, well, I've been using it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, um, it's fun and um, I use it on a daily basis at home. So um, I feel like actually it's one of the reasons I actually really like to come back home because I can drive my own car and um, we don't have many opportunities on tour to do that. We have here, but you know, on other tournaments it's not, it's not so easy. So um, I'm working on my driving skills and uh, really not using the full potential of the Porsche car because um, I would probably have too many tickets, but um, <laughs> that's just, you know, driving around and having like a huge pleasure of it. Yeah. Can I just ask you what kind of driver you are? I mean, compared with the tennis star, is it different? Are you more sort of the I mean, do you like to drive fast or do you like um, to be more defensive? At it depends. Uh, because when I'm when I'm practicing a lot and um, and I'm tired, I like to have you know a piece in my car. Um, so I really like how comfortable the Panamera is, for example. Um, Really, I mean, sometimes I'm putting you know loud music, but overall it's like pretty quiet, pretty smooth, and but still you can feel the sporty vibe, you know. Uh, but sometimes I like to drive, you know, a little bit faster, uh, but not too crazy. Obviously, I have you know so much adrenaline on the court that sometimes I don't need any more off the court. But um, I also have 911 at home, so when I want to mix it up, I jump into 911. Sorry, it sounds weird, but. Um, but I'm pretty proud of you know how I played during these past years here in Stuttgart, and uh, it's amazing that we can have such a prize for winning. Um, pretty crazy. Um, just want to know about the practice today, and also how quickly do you go? Like as soon as you're out of Miami, are you like the next day I want to be on clay, or how quick is that transition? Well. Um, Honestly, that, that was my first practice on clay today, so um, so I'm not gonna have a lot of time to you know play on clay. But uh, I don't think it matters because here the, the surface is pretty fast, so faster than normal clay. I mean, so um, it's like in between actually the hard courts and normal clay. You need to adjust the movements because it's slippery. But uh, overall, I kind of have. Uh, memories in my mind of how, how it was for me to play here uh, last year, for example. So I felt today that I can do the transition pretty quickly, but I'm not expecting that I'm going to feel comfortable, you know, from my uh, first match because, um, yeah, we always need some matches to just, you know, gain confidence on any, you know, surface, even if you feel comfortable on it. Um, yeah, but because of Bad Cup after Miami, I still played on hardcore. Okay, okay. Um, it's your 99th week at number one, um, and you passed Lindsay, I think, uh, on the big long list uh, this week. I'm curious for you, you have, as you know, many stats surrounding uh, your last three years. Are there certain stats that make you sit up to take notice and think, wow, that's cool? Oh, and also just reaction to the 99 as well. Oh, well, um, honestly, yeah, this is one of these stats, actually, and um, I think the overall, like, um, that I'm in, like, a top 10 of all time, um, in terms of weeks at number one, it's pretty, I wouldn't expect that, you know, ever, a um, couple of years back, so um, this is one of them, and uh, sometimes during the season when, when I finish, you know, like, um, Sunshine double or like one swing, uh, my team is like saying me, telling me that um, I I don't know I lost only like five matches this year or something you know. Then I feel like wow, um, it didn't feel like it, but uh, for sure 
I'm always happy with the consistency, so I would say these two. Okay, behind you, what can you get there? And then come for some. There's a question about you um, playing on clay. I remember when you came in last year, I think you came out of um, being injured and, and still you won in a very um, um, pretty good condition, I think. How easy is it for you to adapt to clay? I mean, do you still take to it like like a fish to water? Is it very easy for you to, to play on clay? It is easy, but still, um, you need to remember that your brain thinks that the ball is going to bounce in a different way for a couple of days. So, even for the, you know, for a player who's feeling really comfortable, I, I feel like you always need a couple of days anyway. Um, but last year, I I was coming back from injury, but I practiced in Warsaw on clay, uh, so it was different than this year. This year is more similar to 2022. Because back then I also played Fed Cup and I also had only like two days on clay before my first match. Um, but we'll see, you know, it's still honestly my second year when I have a situation like that. So um, it, it was a nice experience in 2022, but I remember I played with no expectations. You know, this year is a little bit different with um, you guys reminding me about, you know, defending the title. <laughs> so I'll try to take it easy and step by step no matter what. Um, it's a special year with the Olympics this year. Um, how important are the games for you and do you change your schedule to be prepared perfectly? Um, I wouldn't say there is much room for ch changing the schedule before the Olympics. Uh, if you want to you know, play on clay and on grass, uh, and I also, you know, I always want to do that. So there's not much room to do that. Obviously, we're, I'm not going to take vacation after we move on. Um, so this has to wait, but uh, maybe we'll adjust the schedule afterwards so I can rest properly. Um, yeah, because the tour is intense and having one more important tournament in there, uh, it's not easy to maneuver in that, but, um, but we'll do our best. Um, yep. Okay, we'll do two more up the back there and then Yannick. Yep. Hello, oh, Igor. Saudi Arabia is getting more and more influence on tennis uh, with tournaments, ambassadors, and an offer, a um, big offer for uh, WTA and ATP, ATP to fuse. What is your opinion about this development? Well, honestly, um, in terms of the these offers, I'm always kind of waiting for the official uh, decision, and you know. We as players, we don't have much um, influence on that, so um, I think you know WTA and ATP needs to um, make, make these decisions and you know put us in a space where we kind of know what we're standing on, um, because for sure the game is you know changing and um, and this has influence on it. But I hope you know this influence is gonna be positive in terms of you know the the change that uh, may you know happen there, um, and WTA has kind of. Um, has told us, you know, before uh, when we had, you know, plenty of meetings that um, this is, you know, one of the goals to make some changes there. So we'll see how that's going to go. Um, and no matter where, where, you know, the finals are going to be, I just hope it's going to be a nice atmosphere. And um, um, and I hope WTA is going to take care of that so we can um, just be tennis and enjoy it. Okay, last one, yeah. Um, from the outside, I feel like you manage, uh, you manage expectations quite well from the tennis world on the one hand, from, but on the other hand also uh, expectation from your home country in, in Poland. If I speak to Polish uh, colleagues, they always say like, yeah, some people in Poland, they think now you guys to win every single tournament, which obviously is not, not possible. Um, how do you manage that for yourself? And sometimes also if you have days where you don't feel very comfortable, how you manage everything? Well, it's pretty easy for me to like cut off all these things that that, um, that are like um, screaming these things, you know, like social media or everything. So uh, during the tournaments, I try to not go there too much. I'm just, you know, posting my stuff and not really going on Twitter or, or Instagram. And actually, at the beginning, I kind of had to force myself to do it, but now it feels comfortable. And now, actually, there's so much so many things on the internet that I don't really understand and that are weird and not really true that I, I, it's better for me to stay away from it a little bit. Um, so in terms of the expectations from the outside, that's it. But I have my expectations. Um, 
And I would say if I feel like um, I didn't manage expectations well overall, it's usually because I didn't manage my expectations, you know? Yeah. The ones from the outside, they don't really matter that much because I made, you know, huge work to to manage it and to not really care about them. But still, still sometimes it hits you, especially when you're like tired and you know you did your best, but still people are like scrutinizing you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.